When you hear that Midjourney has released a video model, you're going to start imagining yourself directing the scene, but there is one big problem. Midjourney did not build in any specific camera controls. You could try simple phrases like zoom in or zoom out, and I have examples of when that works, but I also have examples of when that doesn't work. And that might leave you kind of confused, like why is it not listening to me? And because these video generations can get kind of expensive, I'm going to show you some different prompting techniques that might help you get the shot you're looking for. My name is Nolan Michaels, I've made nearly 4,000 mid-journey videos. None of these tips are guaranteed to work, but these are the things I would try. The first thing you might want to add to your prompt is the idea of speed, and you can keep this really simple. It's either fast or slow. Take a look at this. Zoom out didn't work, right? The camera just stands kind of still, even though the prompt clearly says zoom out. But look at this. Zoom out slowly works. I don't know why speed plays such a big role in the prompting of these mid-journey videos, but it does make a difference. Think slowly or quickly. You don't need to make it more complicated than that. And this koala here might be a good example of showing the difference between slowly and quickly. Truth be told, there isn't that much of a difference, but one clearly does move faster than the other. I'd say slowly is a little more gradual, while quickly might have some accelerated movement. Either way, when your simple camera prompts are not working, just remember to add in some speed to the direction. Another thing you could try is adding a second part to your prompt, describing the end goal. Special thanks to Technovation for this tip. They suggested we try zoom out to full body shot, and I think this worked out pretty well. We're taking the concept of camera movement, but we're also describing what we want the camera to reveal over the course of the scene. That will help with the direction of the animation. And hey, quickly, would you mind hitting the like button on this video if you've learned something new so far? I really want to share this with more people and I need your help with that. Thanks. Let's jump to the opposite of movement. What do we do if we want the camera to stay still? You'll notice we only have the option for low motion or high motion. If we want a still camera, I found this prompt to work best. Static still wallpaper. Take a look at this. Isn't that amazing? I mean, if you've used this generator at all, you'll know that these type of results are kind of rare. Normally, the camera is always going to move more than you've expected, so try static still wallpaper. I got that wallpaper idea from Smarty Bot Show, so thanks for that suggestion. And I showed this in a previous video, but you can also try mentioning something else in the scene, like this example. Static camera, the plants blow in the wind. I don't know if that's going to work every time, but you might find success with that strategy. And I want to quickly point out that you could try all of these prompts with the raw model as a last resort, but I haven't found it to be 100% necessary, it's just a good thing to troubleshoot with. You can now find the raw model in your settings, you don't have to type it in your prompt anymore. Going back to zoom for a minute, instead of using the word zoom, you could describe the concept of a zoom. I got this tip from MG Williams. It's prompting for something like the camera getting closer. And this works great if you have more than one asset in your scene. We have a picture of this woman holding an apple, and then we could say camera getting closer to her face. And it's going to do the action of zooming into a specific part in the scene. Or we could say the camera getting closer to the apple, and that's going to change the focus of where the zoom in takes place. As you can see, it's not perfect, but that's how you would go about generating this type of movement. Here's a small extra tip for you. I got this from Bat Auto mat. They suggested adding the phrase, the camera tracks the subject when you want consistent high movement. And this obviously works great for vehicles. We want the car to speed away, right? And we can see that happen here, but the camera kind of stays in place. So if we ask for the tracking shot, the camera does a decent job at staying with the car. You could also try mentioning motion blur to help with the animation. I didn't find this to be 100% effective, but I have an example here of when it made the results better. The simple prompt, the car speeds away, and like, you know, it doesn't do a very good job at all. But adding motion blur to the prompt and we get these, which is way more interesting to look at. Again, not perfect, but number one and number two on the top, I think those did a pretty good job. I have another big frame of prompting for you to try, and this involves prompting for the viewer. Special thanks to BakaBlitz6591 for this recommendation. We are going to refer to the camera as the viewer, so we can say things like, the viewer moves away from the subject, and we can get some nice simple results like that. Or the opposite, we can say the viewer moves in closer to the subject. Again, instead of prompting for camera, we're going to change that to viewer. 
It works great, right? We can also combine this with the speed tip from earlier. The viewer moves away slowly from the subject. We've covered zooming pretty well, but what about moving the camera side to side with a pan? I'll be honest, the bot isn't great at doing that right now, but I found two things that might help you out. Take a look at this. I said the subject stands still, the viewer moves to the left. One, two, and three did not work at all. You'll see the bot usually make the subject follow any camera movement you have in your prompt, but in number four here, it worked. One out of four isn't good odds, but at least it's proof of a possible win. And that leads me to my next tip, which is kind of an experimental idea, but you can try creating the foundational 2D image with the camera prompt in mind. Again, this only kind of worked, but maybe that will help you generate your vision. So I literally prompted the image generator for camera pans to the left of a woman in sleek purple robes. It gave me these four results, and you know, I didn't like three of them, but this one was not bad. So I animated this picture, and this is what it gave me. Isn't that kind of interesting? Like, it did sort of work. I know I'm being a bit wishy-washy, but I found this to be an interesting result. Those are the most reliable ways of controlling a camera in mid-journey, and if you want to learn how to generate longer videos using the extension feature, you should really watch this now. I hope you're doing well, take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.